Hello, I'm Herb Coach. And I'm Joe Morrison. Today I brought over the new Lionel Vision Line GG1 for our review. And we're with the Chicagoland Lionel Railroad Club. Motor 4935 to the tower. Are we still clear? Over. Your route is lined. Good. Uh, signal indication. Over. Are signal Hey, Joe, we got a chance to look at your GG1. Uh, this is the 4935, and if I recall, this is one of the later models that had the smooth line, no rivets. You can see it's a welded construction, which is really nice. What can you tell me about your engine? Like you said, Herb, it was the successor to the original riveted 4800 that the Pensy put out that had a riveted body as opposed to a welded body. The weld is much more streamlined. It was um, designed actually by the famed industrial designer Raymond Lowy. And the 4935 is actually still on display at the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. At, at Steamtown? I believe, so. I believe that's what it's called. Okay, yes. good, good. The GG1s saw a lot of action on the Northeast Corridor as well as from Harrisburg to Pennsylvania and New York City. So trains like the Broadway Limited, the Senator, and couple more others they were they saw a lot of action so Joe these were electrified when did they start electrification of uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad during the Great Depression um, they sought to not necessarily remove smoke entirely but just to minimize the soot and the dirtiness that came about from steam because even though they still use steam engines like the torpedo and the uh -huh. K4s and stuff it minimized a lot of the soot that came into the air. Yes, it did. I don't think they're really talking about pollution at the time, but they just hated all the cinders and smoke. Uh, couldn't hang your laundry out. Couldn't have said it better myself, Herb. Yeah, hey, see, we got the steam going here. Yes, we do, Herb. You know, and they would have the steam so that there was a way that they could heat the passenger cars and not have to rebuild passenger cars from steam locomotives. Right, Herb. And the way the smoke unit worked on the real GG1 is that it would only go, it would only spurt out up, up the top here for about a period of about 30 to 45 seconds, and for about five minutes longer, it would just stay stagnant. Okay, so uh, it would release excess steam, and then the rest went into the right. passenger cars. Yes, sir. I like how they have the engineer right here, and, and I believe there's a fireman on the other side. Yes, there is, sir. Fireman was used to, uh, like you said, with the steam generator. His job was to make keep it warm. Or well, he kind of had an easy job. Because of the long nose of the GG1, it was nice to have another person looking out the other side. Because it's hard to see if you're on the right side. It's hard to see anything to the left, and if you're on the left side, it's hard to see anything from the right because of the long nose. But it, it proved well for safety features because it, it could absorb a lot of the impact if if it was ever in an accident. You know, it's also nice to see how the numbering, the 493, are re is real crisp. And I, I always like the five gold stripes going across the engine itself. I do too, Herb. I like the, with the Brunswick green, it's almost a black color. When the cars come in in August, I like the, I like how it, uh, the Tuscan redness of the cars will contrast with the Brunswick green of the engine. That's okay. why I went with the green one. Yeah, and, and I always like the Pennsylvania key. The Keystone uh, logo. Yeah, it's, it's featured here as well as in the front. So Herb, on the Cab 2 remote, they have the options of putting the pantographs up and down. If you, Oh, on those lower two right-hand yeah. corners. So here's to put them up and down on each each side, depending on which, which, way, the engine, which way the engine is facing. Okay, and then the engine, when it goes forward, automatically the rear one would be up, and when it goes backwards, the front pantograph would be off. That sounds confusing, but that's the way it is, isn't it? Just the way it is, Herb. The drag pantograph is the one that's taking the power. Yep. The office is calling to 4935. 4935 entry. Go ahead, over. Make a pull to the pit to top her off. Over. Understood. 4935 out. Yeah, I like how this uh, engine starts up with the crew talk and uh, identifying the number that comes up uh, for the engine. Certainly. One of the hallmark features of the Vision Line is that it maintains the 
road specific crew talk and dispatcher sound. I like how the rear pantograph goes up and the forward pantograph goes down uh, recreating the actual function of the railroad when it goes forward. Absolutely and also the light will automatically turn on depending on which direction it will go. For instance the with, the, with this pantograph raised, it indicates that it's going heading in this direction. The opposite direction of the pantograph. Correct. So the GG1, the reason it's called a GG1 is because it was, it was as if two Class G steam engines were put together back to back. And Class G locomotives had a 460 arrangement and so since this has four front wheels six driving wheels here six driving wheels here and depending on which direction you go these could be front wheels or rear wheels it's it a powerful a, engine absolutely her so joe how much power did this have what kind of horsepower did it have it could reach up to six thousand horsepower though. oh that that's some nice horsepower that'll move a train I actually saw a YouTube documentary. They, when the lap, when the GG1 did its last run, the New Jersey Transit actually had one in their possession, and they did a excursion almost uh -huh. that they could bring the commuters to and from New York City. And one of the engineers said while he was running it at one time that it could reach 80 miles an hour on two thirds of its power, which was wow, pretty. pretty so. We're Where's looking at uh, 100 miles an hour on this engine. Oh, at least, and that that was only because at some point, at some points on the Northeast Corridor, it was limited to speeds, but it it didn't quite. Some would argue it didn't quite reach its full potential with the regulations and stuff. I like how the vents are detailed here up front. Yep, it was pretty impressive how they were able to paint the stripes here with these grades. Now, there's also an electrification feature that's simulated in these pantographs. Yes, there is, Herb. When the pantographs are raised, either both or just one of them, they have an arcing effect where if you had it on the real, on the real catenary system, you could see sparks. And actually, if you put both pantographs up, it goes into what's called de-icing mode, in which the pantographs both go crazy. They just spark all over the place. <laughs> There we go. So this is the de-icing mode where sometimes the GG1 when I guess it was raining outside or snowing for that matter, they needed to just punch the punch the catenary wires a little bit just to make sure that the engines after it and itself also got a good They pickup. actually put speakers in both ends of the engine so the sounds kind of reverberate as it's running around the layout. Oh, okay, I can I can tell that. And also, when you throw the couplers on either end, you'll hear it. And also, we have a legible builder's plate down here to indicate the GG1 was manufactured in Altoona Works at the Junior Auto Shops. This particular model, the 4935, was built in 1943. So it had a long life. It went, it went well into the 90s. Some did, Herb. Hey, Joe, I want to say that uh, Sir Tapham Hat and two of his engineers are going to help us uh, with this review. Awesome, Herb. Always enjoyed watching them on, uh, on the Thomas and Friends growing up. Yeah, at the Island Sodar, huh? Yep. So if running one of these Vision Line GG1s, you should keep in mind that the pentagraphs will only cl clear up into six and a quarter inches. Yeah, we got quite a few bridges here that are below that capacity. Harrisburg Yard Office calling to 4935. 4935 answering. Go ahead, over. Clear to move east on one runner. When ready, over. Understood. 4935 out. Well, it has a nice rev up and Realizing that it doesn't have a diesel engine to charge it or steam to chuck it. It's all electric. Yes, it is, Herb, and despite all that, it does have varying RPM levels, so while it can 
while it does not have the sounds like you said, it does have the increasing intensity of the electric motor sounds. Okay, let's get it going. Certainly. Yeah, we didn't get the cars yet for the Pennsylvania, so we threw in some southern uh, cars uh, to show its uh, capability. Boy, did they look good. Show that engine has a nice line. Well, this is a nice engine, Joe. I really like how it's got the nice painting. I like how they've uh, brought back uh, announcing the number board for the Vision line. I, I agree. Um, with the Vision line, GG1, and the catenary and the arcing effect, we see Lionel once again pushing the envelope in model railroading design and adding new features that no one else has done before. Well, that break takes us to the end of this review. Uh, Joe Morrison and Herb Coach, and we're with the Chicagoland Lionel Railroad Club. Over now.